So Phil, is Ethernet the future technology for storage? The, the short and simple answer is yes, but, uh, you know, you have to say yes, but. Um, you know, th there's a huge investment in, in traditional um, storage area network technologies like fiber channel. Uh, and you know, that, that isn't going away anytime soon. Uh, and you know, the fiber channel vendors are um, increasing the speed of, um, of their storage you know, up, to, up to 40 megs and beyond. So you know, I think um, ultimately though, um, all the storage area vendor storage area vendor um, community is, is committed to uh, converged enhanced Ethernet um, as being you know, the, the, the ultimate um, replacement for you know, block storage types of, of structures because it, it, it overcomes you know, all the reasons why um, you know, fiber channel was invented in the first place, which was because Ethernet wasn't delivering a fast enough transfer in terms of, um, of lossless, scalable, and, and non-blocking switching. Ethernet can now do that. So basically, the, the reason why fiber channel was invented in the first place uh, has, now, um, has now disappeared. And if you use Ethernet for you know, connecting together your, your processors, your I.O. and your storage, then it, it simplifies the whole um, switching architecture, which will make it much, much cheaper and easier to manage. So, you know, in, in short, the answer is um, yes, Ethernet is the future of storage, but don't expect these, um, you know, these other techniques like uh, fiber channel to disappear anytime soon. It's going to be a long, slow, lingering death, I think. So, so my, my understanding is that requires some new standards for Ethernet. Where are we with those standards? So there's, there's two standards that are involved in terms of uh, moving traditional block storage onto an Ethernet network. Uh, the first is conversion enhanced Ethernet, and that's what in allows Ethernet to be a lossless environment, uh, which is the kind of quality that you would expect in a fiber channel environment, where the, there's bandwidth reservation before traffic is sent. Uh, that standard then enables fiber channel over Ethernet, a second standard, uh, to actually in, uh, allow you to take block storage and attach it directly to an Ethernet network, uh, and then connect to your servers instead of having a fiber channel SAN dedicated for that function. Uh, but that's not the only way to have Ethernet enable a storage environment, right? There's, uh, there's NAS head ends that connect, to di connect directly to Ethernet, um, and there's some forecasts in the market, uh, I don't know Forrester's view on this, that, that NAS will actually outgrow uh, or outpace the growth of uh, block storage. And part of that's because of multimedia. Uh, a lot of uh, video production is, is stored on, uh, on uh, file-based storage, uh, network-attached devices, and uh, there's a lot of audio files that are all stored in that format. And then there's iSCSI, and I think that the attention that FCOE is driven in the marketplace with Ethernet for a storage network is it's really kind of garnered some attention again for iSCSI because those standards have been in place for a while. It's a little bit more proven. There's some certification, interoperability that's been done, and that can enable somebody to do something very practical right now and, and again, reduce their cost because that's one of the things Ethernet's proven to do is, is make things less expensive to deploy. Well, I would agree with that. Uh, being able to get to a unified fabric within the data center is a large cost savings. And you're right, as we see 10 gig Ethernet become the standard default connectivity method inside the data center over the next few years, the speed issue starts to go away. And even in our own processing environment, where we're obviously challenged to process a lot of our data in real time, we've already made the decision that any kind of persistent store can't be in the trade path. So once you accept the fact that you can't do persistent store regardless, well then that persistent store for record keeping can in fact run a little bit behind. So that opens up the door for things like network attached storage, et cetera, which uh, gives you quite a bit of cost savings. I think we're seeing the whole structure of, of storage changing. You know, we're seeing more directly attached storage on the processor cards. Uh, we're certainly seeing a rapid growth in iSCSI storage uh, and we're seeing a lot of interest in network attract attached storage. But, but essentially that's, that's the sort of um, technology side of it. Um, you know, in terms of the, of the processes, it's about how do we stop this huge doubling of storage every year, which is you know, killing every CIO's budget, uh, and looking at you know, automatic relegation of, of any files that haven't been looked at for 30 days onto second tier and third tier storage to push it out into cheaper and cheaper storage all the time. 
uh, and that is really you know, encouraging um, a, a whole raft of new technologies um, to be brought in alongside that very expensive fibre channel SAN. And one of the things that you talked about earlier being unstoppable, virtualization. What, what's, what are you, what's your experience so far in terms of the effect of virtualization on storage? Because one of the things that I've seen in talking to a lot of customers is uh, the more they virtualize their compute plane, the more their storage requirements go up because they've got more of these virtual machines booting from uh, storage that, and, and the storage requirements growing as a result. So is that consistent with what you see? I think... Um... I mean, if you, you, know, you go to the conferences, you listen to the storage vendors, they're all talking of virtualization of storage, but um, it's a very new technology. There are very few enterprises that have really um, you know, engaged with storage virtualization seriously at the moment. So that's, that's really the next challenge, which is um, in how to, uh, to address the impact of virtualization of servers on the whole storage environment. So I've got a question actually. With um, virtualization, one of the, the opportunities is migration of applications between different sites. How does the storage fit in with that? Because clearly moving large amounts of data between sites becomes a, a massive challenge. I think uh, it, it, it's early days at the moment. I mean, you know, the, the, the promise of, of using vMotion to use virtual um, machine transfers, not just within a data center, but you know, to a backup data center, over a, you know, a flat, um, a flat LAN you know, between the data centres on fibre or VPLS. I mean that, that's really quite exciting. But but as you say, you know, the, the challenge is the storage gets left behind, and so you've got to deal with the migration of the storage as well as as the virtual machine. And um, you know, at, at, at the moment um, there are quite separate processes in place which which deal with the replication of storage in in remote sites, and. Um, the vendors like um, VMware are, you know, are coming up with, with, with tools and processes for, start, for getting the storage and the, and the processes in step. But again, it, it's, it's early days, but it's looking quite interesting and promising.